Hello, heathens. Hello, heathens. Hello, my friends. I gotta get this thing off. It's our our Ethernet heathens. (laughs) Ethernet. I thought about that earlier. (laughs) Little little internet goblins. My gosh, you guys, I wanted, I I was going to tell you, I wanted to talk about this before we actually got into today's episode, but you, you guys, so we talked about how, um, Samhain is the witch's new year, right? Oh, Hey, it's one, two, three, while we're recording one, two, three, four, by the way, while we're recording. Oh, that's a good one. That's cool. Cause I did want to talk about this because I feel like we're probably not the only ones experiencing this and actually have noticed it in clients a lot too. And if you guys are kind of where Nicole and I are at. Your probably experiences too. Um, the witch's new year was on Samhain, right? And since then, um, the past week or two, I have been crying almost every day. And I mean, Disney movie crying. Like we have talked, it makes me want to cry. Right? I can feel <laughs> lifetime, it in my eyes. <laughs> lifetime movie crying. The lifetime movie crying. Yes, 100%. Like I... I feel like this there's been a, a big shift in the energy in the world right now and I feel like I can see it everywhere just some of us are more aware of it others are not and that's okay that's not it's just I wanted to like bring to light that I've been so fucking emotional lately and it's been over like sometimes nothing sometimes big things and it's like I think it's like that shedding of a new year like that birth of a new year that energy change for me is what I realized this morning when in in thinking about it was like it's felt like a big energy shift I've been a lot more emotional a lot more tender like a lot more uh what I want to say empathetic for people and compassionate in the way of like somebody tells me something that happened to them and I start crying about it (laughs) yeah have you noticed that like feeling Well, I have noticed that. And I, you know, it's very interesting because we do see a lot of people and we talk to them face to face, right? Even with each other. And, you know, you and I, I think, had to watch some horror movies yesterday so we can get out of that, like, sadness, (laughs) right? Like, just to get out of, like, the being so empathetic about the whole world and... (sighs) And uh, even though it's a, it's a nice place to be. And I do, I do have been working hard on like trying to meet people with, especially after the four agreement one that comes out today. uh, It's well, next week. It came out last week when you're listening to this, but for us, it comes out on the same day because we record a week ahead. So, so I've been trying to like show people more compassion and what does that mean without giving my whole entire being to where then I lose myself. So it's that, it's that fine line and that made a middle path that we're really trying to balance, you know, what I can give in the best good and what I need to hold for myself also in the best good. So I'm yeah. holding both humanity and myself in this equal level yeah like on a scale trying to constantly keep it balanced yeah which is funny because i think i read that uh venus went into libra just recently woohoo we love libra i love libra venus it's not my venus but it's not mine either but it's a good one four other planets i mean (laughs) it's exalted in venus right Mm -hmm. and that could be why we feel so sappy right now it's more of a sappy thing than it is like i'm sad i'm crying Right. And I I wanted to bring up to let you guys know that like, man, you're not alone if you're feeling sad right now. Like it's not, don't, don't try to don't judge it. it. Yeah. Don't judge it. That's there it is. Thank you. I was like, I just wanted to talk to you guys about that because I've been feeling it fucking heavily. I know Nicole has, I know other people have, and people are getting confused about why they're feeling that, you know? And I'm like, I think we all are kind of feeling like, you know, just sappy. Just sappy. We're just a little sappy and that's yeah. okay. Explore it, you know? I mean, the nice thing is, is we do have some like tragic things that are happening. We have two wards that are happening on the planet right now. And, you know, whatever side that you're on, that's fine. Because like really what it is, is that these people that aren't fighting are the ones that are paying the cost of it. And that's yeah. what really makes me like upset. Right? Like I know war has a purpose, I guess. I'm not <laughs> here to actually divulge on that. Right. Um, but like 
to just have empathy for both sides because they're losing so much. Yeah. Yeah, Not only structure, right? Structure, people, souls, like, you know, it's as, you know, being human as we are, like, it's okay just to feel compassionate and sad about what is going on for these poor people. It's the, you know, and I actually, I think less, oh, ooh, what'd you get? I forgot about this until just now when we were talking earlier about how you felt like something hit you. Yeah. So at some point, at some point yesterday, I thought exactly what I was thinking about is because I've been seeing these dead babies and all that kind of stuff on Instagram. And I thought about releasing all those souls yesterday. I knew it. I knew I'm gonna it. cry right I'm now. I'm gonna cry too. We're gonna cry, uh. you guys. So yesterday, last night, you guys, just for a backstory, I asked Nicole. I was like, "Did you have something hit you last night?" Because it, I immediately thought about her afterwards. Um, last night I was laying in bed. I'm on TikTok. I read my book. I'm laying on TikTok and I'm t- trying to go to sleep. And I got hit with, oh my god, like this feeling of panic and sadness and just it made me literally want to physically puke I had to sit up out of bed ground myself literally put my feet on the floor ground myself and I was Mm -hmm. like holy like holy fuck holy fuck like it was so intense and I was just like I asked her I was like did you feel something last night did something hit you or and I because I thought about her last night and I'm like damn this doesn't feel like I'm the only one feeling this this doesn't feel like it just hit me. It feels like it hit maybe two or three or something, something. It doesn't feel like mine, yeah. just mine. And I was just like, what the hell? It came out of nowhere. And I that makes. I didn't even like, you know, like I said, to me, it was like, oh, like a thought about it. And, you know, I saw basically you know, an oversized view of the world and close to where the wars are happening. And I just was like, I, and I think it was after we watched the movie that we watched yesterday, because I started thinking about like those souls being trapped and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I try to figure out what as like a witch, as a magical being what can I do to help, right? And that's kind of where it led me, was right to the fact of just kind of releasing those souls off of the planet so they could be reincarnated or whatever. And and of course, we're so, we are so fucking connected. <laughs> that makes sense why I felt... What it, what I how I can describe it, you guys, is I it's like this big black star, like but like what stars look like, uh, like this just massive energy that was just dark and black and hurt, and it like hit me, and so I grounded because I was like that no, no, <laughs> go <laughs> no into the earth, not me, <laughs> I can't handle that, no no no. I'm too sensitive right now. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, that makes sense then. That's so funny. Hmm. I you forgot would... all about that because I went to bed and I was like, meh, meh. Yeah, she's like, no, nothing, no. Yeah, Trinity came, slept with me. I fell asleep shortly after, no, nothing. And I was like, well, I was planning on meditating on it. That makes sense. And then I would have probably texted you and been like, are you sure you didn't do anything last night? <laughs> uh, right. Are you sure? <laughs> What'd you do? Yeah. The The reason I brought that up in the beginning, you guys, again, is if you're feeling sad, it's okay. Explore it. Make sure that you're like, l- like looking into it if you feel the need to. If not, try to ground it. Treat yourself mm-hmm. with compassion and love right now. It's a hard times that we're going through. The world is an interesting place to be living in at this time you know well and i agree but you know i always go back to like we are the world has been the same 
we're not the first ones to go through a hard time that's for sure no like it's always been you know people in peace people in the of course the titles have changed and you know the chapters are a different flavor but like really it's just been a big huge cycle that goes over and over and over again yeah and I will say I do think the energy is changing in the world which is really nice um but obviously there's more there's reasons why we're all here essentially and so I feel like that's actually ends up being a great opener for today because today we're talking about inner silence and inner peace. Mm -hmm. Um, And I realized in researching this that we can't just call it silence and peace, right? Because silence can mean absence of sound or noise, absence of mention, meaning oblivion or secrecy. Mm -hmm. Um, It can be the forbearance from speech or noise. And that is definitely not what we're talking about. And the def there's so many definitions for peace too. And like, you know, there's like a state of tranquility or quiet, harmony in personal relations, freedom from disquieting or oppressive thoughts or emotions. And so I realized in researching, I was like, oh my God, we are definitely talking about inner silence and inner peace. And the reason we're talking about both of them is because they go hand in hand. Right. And I was like, I feel like, and I don't know if you feel this way, but I feel like the silence come first and then the peace will follow kind yes, of thing. hundred percent. I feel like you can't have one without the other. Right. Like they hold hands. You can't have light without dark, even though these two are more on the same side. You still need both because to have inner peace, you have to have some inner silence. You can't, you can't feel that inner t- tranquility and like state of rest without ha- having silence you can't have racing thoughts of truth of intrusive thoughts you can't have like the what do, what do we uh the death spiral and toilet yeah. bowl of thoughts spiraling down you know death spiral the death spiral <laughs> the, i'm death spiraling right now <laughs> <laughs> um um it's interesting though because like what they just showed me was uh you know okay so if we have like divine light come down and if you talk about the hermetic tree of life or the quabala like it splits into two it splits into black and it splits into white so the divine light the first split that it does is into black and into white well i feel like silence is dark and then peace would be light uh okay i like that Mm. that makes a lot of sense because yeah they have to they have to be they have to be together and like that's the perfect togetherness right 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 well at least in my head it's the perfect togetherness that's the only way you get to the middle path peeps it's silence and peace black and white dark and light you need them both Mm -hmm. um so before we get deeper into like breaking down what inner peace looks like and what silence looks like I want to start today off by talking about what it isn't, because I feel like with everything we've, we say this a lot, right? Is that there's a facade or a mirage around a lot of things in the spiritual community, in the metaphysical world, inner world, whatever you'd like to call it. There, There's just a facade behind a lot of things and we like to bring, make it more real. And so mm-hmm. I feel like this is a good one we have to talk about to make it more real um, because inner peace and inner silence isn't what other people would see when they look at you so for right right right. so you're talking like yeah like almost the illusion of what we think we're supposed to be in peace and silence compared to what it actually Actually is is. yeah yes ma'am so Mm -hmm. like good examples would be um that inner peace is it's being consistently calm and never having fun that's not that's not what this looks like and another one is it's not being passive and letting everything pass right by you because i have inner peace and you just let it all fly by no it's we're not being passive because we've talked about that before when we were talking about surrender and what anger and have all of these things we've talked about this whole entire year Mm -hmm. this is the same it's not passive this is something you work towards and you are aware of it is not a passive feeling a passive thing um another one that i saw that i thought was kind of funny 
is um in the in keeping with it's not what other people would see when they look at you is it's not becoming a quiet reserved individual right i would say like my actual like thought of like meditation was a perfect example like i thought i was supposed to be like a buddhist monk i need a rock out back so i can perch on it for 20 (laughs) hours i have to shave my head i have to shave my head and wear orange like i what (laughs) yep (laughs) what are you yeah this isn't something we're gonna we're gonna look at it in a way of what it actually looks like what it can Mm -hmm. do for you because Again, that's the mirage, right? That's this false thing that, you know, people like to look at. It's pretty to look at. It's cool to think about, right? Like, fuck yeah, I want to, do I want to be that person that's meditated for 20 hours on a rock out in nature with the comfort of the wind blowing around me and I'm just getting all this downloads from the universe? 100%, 100%. But that's just not reality in the world we live in right now, at least not for me. Right, right. And I'm so, working on it. Yeah, right. Same. <laughs> so inner peace isn't something that you can fight for or chase. Okay. It's something that we work for. We talk about this a lot in the way of this is going to be like finding another new muscle inside of us that we didn't know we had mm-hmm. that we are like, Ooh, let's start working this muscle out. And a lot of what we've talked about over this year is going to play heavily into this too you know absolutely well because you have to have the awareness of what you're doing to you know we had just talked about this earlier about being addicted to certain things and you know it's funny because I never thought about being addicted to like certain emotions or certain like ways of being I always thought it as like an external thing right? right so the nice thing is when stuff happens and you don't necessarily get the same outcome that you wanted to happen, I guess, then like, you know, I discovered that I want a certain type of attention, right? So like trying to figure out how to take that puzzle piece out and replace it with a new puzzle piece, because I'm creating a new picture is what we're trying to do. So piece by piece, I am becoming the highest version of myself right like I'm not losing myself I'm losing all the stuff that does no that doesn't do any good for me anymore I feel like the best word for that is refinement you're absolutely absolutely it's like don't you do that in alchemy as well when you go through all the the steps of alchemy you refine Mm -hmm. everything you don't you go back through and you start like refining it all yeah you try to get the you get all the impurities out of what you like say a plant like uh lavender where you go through this process of heating up and distilling and then calcifying and you get this essential oil basically or this tincture you get this purest essence of that plant it's almost like I guess if you would like almost taking maybe like taking the soul out of it and just having the soul yeah you're taking all the body and everything out of it now and the thing is is you can do this and do this and do this and over and over again to get the purest form yes um and then look up uh there's seven stages of alchemy and look those up so that you have uh just a familiarized a way of doing it we talk about know thyself all the time. They break down the seven steps of alchemy and it is a phenomenal series that they do mm-hmm. that, uh, that was one of those things. Like, like I always talk about too, is, you know, when you read a book, you got to pause and maybe go back and start over again because you have to like take it in chunks. That's what I had to do with that when we were, when they were talking about the seven stages of alchemy, because, I think the first three, I was like, yeah, 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 that got, I got it. And then we got to like the higher ones and I was like, I, I need to process for a minute. <laughs> right, right. Well, even like we were talking about uh, at our last meeting, we were talking about like, I was, I guess I'm a little afraid of like doing it wrong, of course. Yeah. So I have to, I've already separated my alcohol tincture with the plant matter so i've separated those two but now i'm supposed to burn the plant matter and i was like um 
like, do I burn it from underneath or do I burn it from the top? Like, do I like put a torch on the top of it so it burns? Because you're supposed to burn it until it's white. Oh, wow. And then you take that and you mix it with some water and you let it evaporate and you're left with the crystal, the salt of the plant. It's super cool. Ooh, I'm super yeah, excited about it. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So, and then you put the salt back in the tincture that I've already made. So I, I'm super excited about doing that because I like to burn things anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, plus it'll be really satisfying to see what it looks like when it crystallizes. Yeah, I agree too. Can you, can you, can you taste the crystals? Are they edible? I don't know. It's going to be a little amount, so I could probably like. I'm just curious what that would taste like. Would it taste like sp- it's going to taste? Would smoky. it taste like salt? Right. Would it taste like smoky salt, or would it have like a hint of lavender if you were using lavender? You know, that's such a great question. I'm going to have to find out when I when <laughs> I have the salt. I know, right? I'm like, oh, that's so. I'm so curious. <laughs> um. Okay. So. The I tried to break it down into what inner peace, what it kind of looks like, and I had a hard time, and then it it, it finally kind of you know morphed its way into this little thing. So what I have is inner peace is when the noise inside your head starts to quiet down, allowing you to see the space between your thoughts. Oh, that's a great place. Isn't that a good one to think of? Yeah. Because it's like all of a sudden, um, when we were talking about, was it presence, I think, or something like that. And we were talking about how um, Eckhart was slowing down his words in between um, when he was talking. Because you're, you're very aware. It was like awareness or something. And you're aware. You're here. You're present. Because you're waiting and you're paying attention. And you're not assuming what I'm going to say next. Or what he's going to say next. And it makes me think about that. Like in my head. It's when you're. It's basically the end of racing thoughts. Inner peace brings mm-hmm. the end of racing thoughts. It, it's the moment when you can see the space in between your thoughts. Right. And, and well, and to get to that. Like we have to first acknowledge that we're racing. Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like that's when you, I've always said this is like when you're in the mud, you, A, you don't want anybody to tell you you're in the mud, right? Like, hey, you got mud on your shoes. And you're like, I fucking know. And then like, but you need that awareness. It's like the antidote to stopping it. <laughs> yeah. Which reminds me, if this is the first episode you're listening to, you need to go back and listen to the episode on overthinking. Because we talk a lot about how to become aware of those racing thoughts and like, because it is racing thoughts like that, it's overthinking. You're you're thinking about, you got 50 freaking tabs up. Yeah. You're looking at them all at once and it's horrible. You're also (laughs) completely out of your body because you're not aware of anything that you're doing. You're not aware of like, you're not aware of the state of your being. You're not, uh, you start, like, I remember like racing around the house and being like, what the hell am I doing? Yeah. hundred percent, which goes along with like inner peace gives us the silence we need in a world of constant deafening noise. It's the byproduct of letting go and surrendering to whatever this moment presents to us. And it is relinquishing our need to control and fight. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought inner peace was to me. So uh, I have a little practice for us to do. And if you're driving, you can still kind of do this. Just don't fully do it because we're not going to close our eyes or anything. Okay. So what you're going to do is if you're not sitting, wherever you're listening to this, sit down for a minute. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for sitting down, Nicole. (laughs) (laughs) And what you're going to do is you're going to start tensing up your entire body. Like start your entire body, toes, feet, thighs, calves, butt, like your, all of it, your shoulders, your neck, your hands, your arms, do your stomach, try to do your back. And you're going to try to hold it for 10 to 20 seconds. Okay. Ready? 10, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now let your body fully relax. (laughs) 
take a couple deep breaths and like can you feel how spacious your body feels right now like how your body feels like you have room in it yes it doesn't feel feel so like you're aware of your body Mm -hmm. I saw this practice being described as what inner peace is like except for it comes from the inside out wow that was really good because for that second or two after you're done and you release your body what do you what are you thinking of anything or were you just feeling just feeling just feeling i hope that you all were able to just feel if not try doing this practice um even 10 seconds, I I would try to go for 20 if it's something. Yeah. This, that feeling of outer peace, of body peace like that, where you're just very aware of your body and aware of how much body you have and all the space in your body because you just tightened everything up and now you're aware of it again. It's like you just sent what I guess scientifically could be happening is you just sent all of the receptors back to your brain. Your brain's very aware of everything in your body. Yeah. Right? Can, yeah. Yeah. Like every, just, everybody's online everybody is talking to everybody like yeah yeah i agree that's what I agree. they had described inner peace and the inside feeling like and i was like wow yeah i can i can i can understand that because it's the moment after you release when well, you're yeah, just you, it's the contrast like you went from tense so you got everything on like tight you're you're focusing on making everything tight and holding it mm-hmm. and then it's the release and it's the only way to experience peace that's why you need one thing and then the other because without the tension you will never find peace because exactly. you wouldn't know what that felt like right that's right. a really good it's a really good exercise because like if you start doing that a lot you could expand that feeling you know, oh. if you really worked on it and like expanded it, you could expand that feeling. And then you could probably use that to meditate. Like, I remember what that feels like. Let me bring in that feeling as I'm meditating. Mm-hmm. You could really expand that into being way bigger than just like a moment. Yeah, that's a cool thought. I didn't think of that. I agree with that. Cause that's how that moment of peace after we released is what you usually try to achieve before you meditate interesting interesting you know like that full body relax your body's just calm and like you know a lot of meditations open up with let your body your weight just settle into the seat or the chair or the floor and you're like i don't know what that means (laughs) what does that even mean i'm already sitting i'm sitting (laughs) i'm sitting down (laughs) That's what it means is like Mm -hmm. completely just letting everything relax. That's a, that was a good little add on there, but I didn't think about that. But yeah, that, that is what inner peace on the inside can feel like. So after that, let's move into like what inner peace can look like, quote unquote. Okay. From like the inside. And I agreed with a lot of these and I wanted to bring it to you too and see, you know, see what you had to add and one of them is achieving happiness and contentment through reconnection with yourself so like inner peace can look like that it's just this happiness and this contentment that you can feel inside because you've reconnected with who you truly are instead of feeling this constant like disconnection where everything's chaotic yeah and this one I find is like a hard one to really like sift through because we're so used to and we've been taught from a very young age or domesticated even into this fact of this is what human looks like this is what you're supposed to do like you can't and you can't navigate off of that narrative so not only being aware of it because you've been doing it for so long, but then like also if, cause we tell ourselves stuff, like I always say like, well, I'm not a good person if I'm not worried about it. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like if I don't worry about my bills, then who am I? Or right. Right. Or if I don't worry about where, uh, like my child is a good one. I'm allowed to worry about my child. You know, like that gives you almost the authority of like, I'm allowed to do that. I'm, you know, it's proper 
to do it right like it's not like it's so it's these little like things that we tell ourselves that really like gaslight ourselves into the bigger like if you want to achieve that kind of peace you can achieve the peace in your own way but we're not going it's not like it's also uh i don't know how to like actually say this i guess but you got to find where the worry is not good for you. And that's where we need to get it out of it, right? Like to like peaceful. We're not disassociating from like, if my kid's driving for the first time, of course, I'm a little nervous, a little worried, right? Because I don't want anything bad to happen to her, right? So, but we give ourselves this like permission or this gaslighting into this worry where it becomes toxic and it starts leaking out into everything else in our life because we feel like we're not being appropriate. You're actually bringing me into my next point that I had on here of what inner peace can look like. And that's letting go of superficial worries. Oh, okay. Because I do, I agree with that one very well. I don't, or very, very well. Very, very, much. Well, very, <laughs> very well. well very well very well <laughs> very well very well <laughs> i i agree with this one the more uh that you experience inner peace the the less worry you get about the superficial things like really mm-hmm. truly like you get really comfortable and really content with like the superficial stuff you know the 3d stuff like of course there's different there's there's different levels to everything so i'm using superficial as a broad term right superficial worries because right it could be whatever it means to you and it's going to be it's going to look different to all of us and that's why i'm just giving you guys what inner peace can look like because it's going to look different to every person Mm -hmm. um but a couple other ones i have is you could rediscover yourself and become the best version of yourself right Mm -hmm. and you could start accepting everything without so much as looking at it or sorry you could start accepting everything so you could start looking at it more objectively. So like you mm-hmm. start becoming more, it's like when we, Nicole says this often without judgment, you're, you're, you're looking at it without judgment. You start accepting it. So you can start looking at it. Right. You're observing it and you're accepting it for exactly what it shows up to be. Right. Yeah. And you're not judging it until you get, you know, you, you till you can see the whole thing. I feel like. Yeah. In talking about inner peace and silence, it's like we're taking the blinders off. Mm-hmm. Again, another thing where we're shutting blinders again so we can start looking at everything instead of like letting it hit us so hard. Yes, I think, you know, especially in this day, and I hate saying it like this, um, but it is hard to kind of like allow yourself to find it research you know research it and really like sit with it and learn how to use it to your benefit but I feel like we're so bombarded and distracted by like little things that even like our brains have become this ADHD and it's because we're constantly like grabbing attentions in places right like if it's Mm -hmm. not on my phone it's on my tv it's not on my tv it's on my tablet if it's not on my tablet it's on my laptop if it's not on my laptop it's on my car if it's not on my car it's every advertisement i ever see all of that is buying for your attention yeah they want they're like hey 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 i mean and it's we don't even notice it anymore. Right. But we are constantly bombarded. And this is why we don't have inner peace. This is why a lot of people are using drugs or doing drugs. Well, I guess I meant that in like either free, you're doing it recreationally or if you're getting meditate medicated. Yeah. Prescriptions. That's what I'm trying to say. (laughs) So we get this artificial piece and I am no different than anybody else. So also say um, this comes right. without judgment. Like we always say without judgment. Right. Um, You got to do what you got to do. Right. Fuck yeah, dude. So this artificial piece that we get from like the plant herbs or the med or the prescription medications is what we're really getting. And of course it always falls short 
because we're not getting, we're never achieving the real thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why we continuously have to do medication and do this. It's, you know, it becomes the habit because that's all my piece is over here. I'm going to go over and get my piece. Right. Right. Instead of really sitting in like, you know, go to a river. And I know that's so cliche, but like go to the river and see how you feel. It'll feel bad at first. Fuck yeah, dude. Because you're not used to that kind of like energy. Yeah. Sitting. It, essentially, you're talking about sitting in silence, too. Mm -hmm. And that can be so fucking uncomfy. Mm -hmm. So uncomfy. Especially we should go to a we should go do a deprivation tank. I love deprivation tanks. <laughs> it's fun. It's enjoyable. It's a little if it's a little panicky at first because you're yeah. like. I, my claustrophobia takes over a little bit but then i'm like you're fine you're safe you're fine so then what i did the last time i went i wedged i wedged something into the door so i could see out when i had that claustrophobic moment and i'm like you're fine also horror movies you know <laughs> oh yes buried alive uh, lots of yeah. riddling up here but yeah spending time in silence can provide moments of much needed clarity right and mm -hmm. when we fill our free time with noise we miss out on the benefits that silence can provide and so i also wanted to give you guys some some benefits there it is wow i i really wanted to say some silence <laughs> we're just gonna be silent the rest of the podcast no. i was like wow that's not the word i want stop trying to say it wow. <laughs> Um, I wanted to give you guys some benefits that silence can provide so that maybe this can also be something where if you hear that, you're like, oh, maybe I should try this. It's like, because, you know, you hear things. We say this all the time. We hear this shit all the time. We hear, you should do this. You should try this. You should meditate. You blah, blah, blah. But we're not ever told, like, if you do this, you could experience this. And right. that's what right. I need. It's like, we talked about it before with the nose, right? If why shouldn't I do this? Like, what's your reasoning behind telling me this? So right, because a lot of people like to, you know, they're like, "Oh, don't do that. Don't summons a demon." And you're like, "Well, why? Yeah, why? Why? Well, you can't why? just tell me not to do anything." First of all, why is it there for me to do? Second of all, why are you telling me not to? Yeah, right, right. And then to give an answer like. Well, you just shouldn't do it. That's not the point. That's that makes me want to do it. Now I want to do it. Right. Also, I like pattern tells me all the time. I like to rebel for rebellion's sake. So if you tell me not to do it without giving me a very valuable, good reason, I'm probably going to do it just to see what happens. <laughs> right. Right. Well, because that's the thing is like it's the curiosity and it's the fact that um, almost ego takes over and you're going to do it to have your own experience, right? Like, yeah, you're going to like, well, I'm different. So I won't be, so, like, so it won't affect me that way. But then also. Right. So what I want to do now is give you guys some reasons why this could be helpful and what it could like some benefits, benefits. That's the word I keep trying not to use that I should be using. <laughs> So the first one is that sitting in silence can be encouraged mindfulness. Being mindful and present can create awareness about of what is happening in the present moment, and it can help reduce anxiety and overthinking, which in return calms the nervous system. Because usually when we're not in silence, like we just experienced with the little meditate or the little like tightening the body thing, mm -hmm. our nervous systems on absolute alertness we are ready to go we are ready to if something falls we're going to cat like grab it to where when we're silent it's going to encourage your mindfulness behind it to where you can start opening up and stop being so nervous in your body and overthinking and you can actually be present in the moment mm -hmm. um another one is going to be that it promotes self-awareness and it gives you the chance to observe and if that um accept your thoughts and feelings mm -hmm. um I found this one. I put it in here because this is for my little science nerds. There's actually a study that shows that it stimulates brain cells and quieting the mind can boost brain growth. 
Oh, I like that. They did a whole study on it. If you would like to debunk me, go ahead. I read the study. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but there is a study if you're interested. That was it was very interesting to me. Um, another one is quieting the mind relieves stress. When you practice moments of silence, it can help decrease your levels of cortisol in your body. And there was a study that showed that two minutes of silence, just two minutes of silence can be more calming than listening to relaxing music because we are allowing our brains to hit the reset button and slow back down. Mm -hmm. It's like you give your brain a minute to process information because our minds do need time to think, reflect, and reset so that they can put things in the file. So just that mm-hmm. two minutes has been shown to help your your brain immensely, which I find super cool. And the last one's fun. It just boosts, it, it, silence can boost creativity. When you start to allow your brains to process other things, put them away in the memory brink, like I was talking, mm-hmm. it creates so much more openness in your brain. And when you have more openness like that, it's easier for things to come in, more creativity, more ideas, yeah. more- You're creating space. Yes, making room create yeah. space because again it goes back to that whole thing it was a, all the tabs are open and there's too much going on at one time it's like decluttering your brain so it does put it away yeah that makes complete sense and then you're you can creatively think another one that you just made the little light bulb go off for was too was in that like when you're creating this space, right, you're you're pre- giving your mind this moment of just peace to get through what it's got to get through. It can make you more aware of things you need to be working on or areas in your your emotional pain body that you need to be focused on, right? Because there are times I'll be driving in the car, which is pretty meditative for me because like I go into autopilot and I know I'm aware of what's happening around me, but I don't need to think about how to get to work because I do it every day, you know, kind of thing. And sometimes I'll sit in the car in silence and I let my brain flow. And sometimes you'll be start being aware of like, wow, there's like this, this like nugget of heaviness right here in my like throat chest area. What's that? What are you like? Maybe we should start exploring that. Like it makes you aware of things that you normally wouldn't be able to hold the space for. Mm -hmm. No, I think that because I I think what I was, uh, I've been reading that consorting with spirits and they talked about uh, free thinking. Oh yeah. So when you're reading your garden, when you're doing like mundane thing and you're not thinking about what you're doing, you open the space up for free thinking. So this is our play thinking, something letting your brain play <clears throat> in that space. So I almost can almost thought this as almost like daydreaming Mm -hmm. remember when we were a kid when we would daydream right and create these whole worlds and all that kind of stuff and i don't you know as an adult like you don't have time for that usually right so when you're doing like driving and vacuuming and doing the dishes is having that time to uh play think or to free think and let like the creative thoughts of like whether they're intrusive or not intrusive like it's still creative right Mm -hmm. oh so oh yeah oh yeah that's that's very creative that's a very valid comment it is whether it's intrusive (laughs) or not your intrusive thoughts can be pretty fucking creative man oh mine are good they're very creative same very (laughs) same whole stories man whole stories um so I enjoyed this this um, little nugget from this article and I took the whole thing uh, because it, I feel like this is beautifully written and something that you and I both agreed on when I read it to you earlier. And this person said that inner peace doesn't exist in a vacuum and you don't wake up troubled and disconnected one day and then peaceful and content the next. And that too many modern day thinkers treat inner peace as a kind of radio frequency that you can tap into. And then the person goes on to say, in reality, inner peace is more of a process. For the most part, achieving inner peace involves a lot of shedding. And you have to shed away bad thoughts and bad behaviors to keep you from feeling or that keep you from feeling that sense of tranquility and quiet. Mm -hmm. And that one's a really good one because it 
it is, it's not this foreign place that we can never get to. It's a place that we build brick by brick. Yes, absolutely. Um, oh, go ahead. No, and I was going to say, if you guys have been going through this year with us, going through all these emotions and these things where we're, we're breaking these down so we can understand how to start treating them and how to start being more, show up better for ourselves, right? I feel like it's, this year has been a lot of interpersonal shadow work and we've been just trying to show up better for ourselves so that we could take better care of ourselves. You mm -hmm. have, in doing all of that, you do shed away a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You shed away a lot of thoughts that are no longer needed. Um, a lot of like protectors within ourselves that we've created that we no longer need. Uh, bitiness, uh, sadness, victimhood, all these things. We're shedding that away. Well, then if you can create that little piece or that shed from you and you see it in other people, you can have compassion and empathy for them because you know where they came from. Did you just see me jump? Yeah. Holy God. You're like, I wonder if the uh, listeners are going to hear that in the podcast <laughs> because your, your voice, like it's like it tweaked in the, in the, oh. through the ether and it made me jump. <laughs> You know, something simple. <laughs> if you guys heard that, ha ha ha. Woo, that scared me. It's coming for you, Barbara. But I feel like in saying that too, it goes back to what you were talking about at the beginning when you're talking about building a new picture within ourselves, taking away a puzzle piece that's old picture and putting in a new one. And then you might... You might look at that picture as it's getting close to being done and you might take one that you've already thought you fixed and be like, eh, I can make this puzzle piece prettier. I can make this yeah. better. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to refine it. It's the, This is a process. We talk about this all the time. Everything's a process. This is not mm -hmm. something that you just tap into and all of a sudden you're peaceful and then you fall out of it and then you're, you've got to raise it and then you bring it back down. And I think that was just such a beautiful way to say it. It's not a radio uh, radio frequency. Yeah, you don't have. We're not going to get there all at you know one time. We you have to you have to feel what peace feels like to get there. Earlier, you said it's like climbing Jacob's ladder. Oh yeah, and I think that was a great way to say it too. Did I say that when we were recording or afterwards? Before we were recording, because I was I read that to you because I was saying how he said it's not a radio frequency. And you're right, exactly. It's like climbing Jacob's ladder. Yeah, you're putting in these steps to achieve that place, you know, or achieve heaven, if you will. Um, you have to do each step in order to get there. If you miss a step, you're not going to be able to complete the ladder, right? So, like, if you, um, if you don't start with a little bit with that seed, that nugget of what peace is for you, then it can grow into a bigger like. You nurture it, you grow it. It's just the same thing as like doing anything else, like whether you're meditating or whether you're doing, um working out even I mean it's just like working out like you have to start yeah. somewhere and you yeah. don't start big and bulky you start you know at the beginning and the more you do it the more you love it or whatever right it has the actual benefits of it yeah and like same with working out that's a good example too is like you, you fall off you might lose some muscle density and you got to get back on it again. And guess what? Mm -hmm. You were lifting however many pounds and now you're back to what you started with before and you feel weak and you feel incapable, but you got to be like, well, I got there at one point. I can do better this time, you know? Yeah, it is getting on that bike and riding it more. I mean, you go up. I mean, I feel like it was exactly like this with ritual magic for me is that I would be so good for so long and then I, you know, stop. And then I started climbing again and the wave was getting big and then I would stop. And it's almost like you have to rise and fall to realize that to rise again, right? Like you, that feeling of like, wait, I needed that contrast because I didn't realize this was so good. I didn't feel so good when I'm up here. I have to have that fall, you know, 
to like realize how good it felt. Right. And it makes it worth it to get on that bike again and to drive or, you know, to ride it out. Right. Like you realize, and then eventually those falls become less and less because you understand why you're doing it. Like, I know that I feel good when I do ritual magic. Do I strive to do it every day? Do I miss a day here and there? Yes, I do. But that doesn't stop me. Or I like adapt to, if I always do it in the morning, but today I have to do it at night. I just mm-hmm. adapt to where I am and still do it. Right. Yeah. And that's how you keep something going for a long time. Mm-hmm. It's constant. It's constantly constant reforming. Practice. It's, it's con- constant practice. Yeah. It it's constant. constant retransformation it's constant transformation is something Mm -hmm. else changes in your life you got to shift it to make it fit where you're at right and if we stop thinking about peace being a place where we achieve and more like something we carry in our pocket yes that's what we really want to transition into that thought process of like the peace is something i carry with me no matter what i'm facing absolutely it's not a place where i go it's not something you feel one day and you don't the next no it's you know we're gonna work it out we're gonna we're gonna if it's an egregore i'm going to create it and it's going to be with me so if my anxiety is the baby that i hold in my chest i still do everything that i'm supposed to do but i carry it with me well, peace is no different. Right. I can create that entity, that being. Maybe we put it on my back. That way it's always with me. Absolutely. Um, so I also would like to talk before we, because we're getting close to the end of what I have here, but I want to, I think this part's going to take us a minute because I want to start about, start talking about things that, ha- that, you can do to start the process of achieving some inner peace and silence. And (laughs) I want to preface this with some of these things, Nicole and I will never get off of our Ted talk soapbox for. Okay. (laughs) It's not going to happen. You're probably going to hear it for a long time till we stop seeing it. And it's okay. Cause guess what? We say it to each other and to ourselves too. All the time. If you, if you listen to one of these and you hear it, you're like, Oh my God, they say it all the time. Yeah, we do. We say it to ourselves and to each other all the time too. So I won't get on off my soapbox for this, Mm -mm. but one of them, and this is one that I think is super important to start this process is we have to stop excessively blaming ourselves all the time for everything because there's a difference between taking accountability for your actions and realizing that some things are completely outside of your control Mm -hmm. well it's so easy our ego wants to blame us right and Mm -hmm. then also we know that the judge and the victim live inside our brains too so the judge is going to find us guilty and punish us and then we're the victim to the punishment over and over again and we don't, it just is to serve the first time, then you don't need to punish yourself again. Why are you doing that? You're creating your own Why? fucking misery. You're never going to give yourself that inner peace. You won't be able to be mm. silent because you're constantly telling yourself how bad of a person you are. You you did something wrong. You this, you that. Some things are completely out of your freaking control and there's nothing you could have done to change a situation. Also, you have to realize that everything happens for a reason. You know, that it's is- done for you. Yes. Not to and you. not to you, right? There's a good person that I want you guys all to look up if you've, I don't know. Um, Just do it. It's <laughs> TED Talk, but it's uh, Brene Brown, and she does a thing on shame. Ooh. And it is so, and she's originally a researcher, and then she somehow stumbled into researching shame and I think guilt. And she talks about the difference between shame and guilt, but she also talks about how it looks when you're carrying it. And I think it's a really good thing to like, be, so you can be aware of what you're doing and what ga- what what guilt looks like and what shame looks like. Yeah. So I think what she said simply was like, guilt is I did something bad 
where shame is I am bad. Yeah. Ooh. So it's a it's a good like little nugget to to watch into uh I don't know like education. I wrote that down because I have not seen that yet, and I will be watching it as well. Um. You know what's really funny really quick? I know this is kind of off topic, but it's so funny because I don't tell Nicole everything I research. Usually we talk about it with you guys, but it's so funny how you always lead me in to my next my next <laughs> thing because my next one of something that we have to do to start the process is stop being a victim to your damn life, man. Yeah. If you're consistently finding reasons outside of yourself to justify your behavior or your life, you'll never learn how to take responsibility for your own actions. This is where gaslighting ourselves comes into play. Mm -hmm. And we talk about Gaslight City and we talk about Victimhood Cafe and we're not living there Victim anymore. Cafe. <laughs> we're not getting coffee there anymore. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're we, done. Wrote the, we wrote the Yelp review. We're done. We're done. We didn't like it. No, we didn't like it. And if you did like it, you got to get out of there. Cause guess what? It's not good well, for you. And you know, the one thing is that'll help you kind of shift this thought is uh, I watched something the other day and it was talking about how, like, how would you achieve patience? Like how would God give you patience? Well, you wouldn't really put that human through, like, if you're going to teach them how to be patient, you wouldn't, give them stuff to that was easy you would give them stuff to be patient about so whether that's you know a kid screaming or you standing in line or traffic is a great one to practice like patience right right it's this I always find traffic really funny now that I've gotten to this point but like traffic you can't control right Right. You're you literally have to practice surrender and patience because there's nothing you fucking can do about it unless you get a helicopter to come over and magnetize your car out of traffic and fly you or we have flying cars. I don't know. I'm just saying like traffic is one of those things that like I find amazing because there's so much that we can learn from just traffic. So I can tell you what kind of energy and what kind of work, what kind of day it's going to be just by how traffic is flowing. Um, traffic, you have to surrender to a traffic jam. There's nothing you can do about it. You have to surrender to it, right? So getting mad, getting angry, getting uh, any of those things, the frustrated, you have to surrender to those feelings because there's literally nothing you can do about it. You're just sitting in your car. And the funny thing is that you're beating yourself up for being in traffic. You didn't cause the traffic jam. Right? You literally have to just surrender to it. The other thing is, is everybody takes everything personally during traffic. So if somebody cuts you off, do you really think that person knows you? No, I find or it like, funny now. Right. Because like, they don't know you. They have no right. idea who you are. That wasn't like they were like, oh, there's Cassie. I'm going to cut her off. Well, maybe I did, but like, <laughs> that's because I know you. That's different. <laughs> but that say. person is literally like in their own world, in their yep. own head. They're not trying to race you. They're not trying to compete with you. They're not going to, they're not trying to tell you that you're less than them. Also, unless you're driving around a fucking sports car dog, who, who are you racing? Who are you racing? Me, you I'm have, racing me. You have to laugh about it because, like, sometimes people go fly by, and I'm like, God damn, <laughs> you got places to be. I got places to go, and I want to get there fast. Oh my God. Sometimes I have seen Nicole fly by me on the highway, and dude, her windows down, you could see her jamming in her car, and it cracks me the hell up because I'm like, oh, oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> She's just cruising along singing her songs no the window because it's window. true freedom <laughs> like yeah. i am truly free when i'm on the freeway jamming to my shit windows down it's warm out like oh uh, yeah it's, driving it's, is amazing 
those have been some of my favorite moments of seeing you on the highway and you i'll be like oh here she comes i guarantee that's her <laughs> Woo! oh yeah 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 you hear her singing i heard her singing <laughs> <laughs> to disney probably <laughs> probably um so another one because i have a few um another one that we have to do to start the process of this is and this one hit me pretty hard because this is something i still struggle with a lot uh as well as nicole does i know this very well but we have to start becoming aware of people pleasing Mm -hmm. basically when you're people pleasing you're you're seeking acceptance wow words you're seeking acceptance from others and it prevents you from acting of your own free will And you'll never fully embrace who you are and find peace with with your decisions when you are constantly looking for that acceptance and admiration from other people. Right. Well, and, you know, when we grow up in a certain way, in a certain household, like you're always looking for not only when the next bomb was coming, but you also wanted to know when you were going to get your attention, your little like treat of being like a tiny human. And... So we get addicted to, and they talk about this again in the four agreements about how we get addicted to um, getting that attention. Like admiration, acceptance, all of it. Yeah, all of it, right? You want that, you want your mother or your father to rain down these praises that they give, right? Because we also get punished, and they talked about this too, about how we get punished. You know, don't do that. And I'm not saying it like in a way of like, it's bad or good. I'm just saying like, this is what happens. Like, because obviously I'm going to tell my child not to run across the street without looking. Right. Right. And you would get punished if you did it. So that way you would remember to look before you cross the street because it's bad. And so we get punished and we get rewarded multiple times a day. And then this is where we start to get addicted to the good feeling of the dopamine represent of actually getting praised and attention and validation and admiration. Well, we learn it too, as young kids that go to school, right? Like you don't want to be the weird kid. You want people to like you because being the weird kid makes you feel isolated, alone, all the things. And it feels better to have people like you. So you're going to do whatever you need to do to fit in. You're going to people please. You're going to say you want to go and do something, even though you don't, because you don't want that person to be mad at you. You don't want to feel that you want to, but in doing that, you, you, it starts to prevent you from acting on your own free will. You don't have peace. Yeah. Sometimes you, you have regret. You have, you know, yeah. you get, you're we comfortable. Get, we get lost. Yeah. We yeah. lose, we lose a piece of ourselves. Cause even yes. right now, I feel like that's why I feel so weird right now is I really don't know who I am. Right. And I'm rebuilding that picture. Yeah. So it's like, you come to this point of like, well, this is what I always did. So I'm going to do it again. But this time I'm going to watch and analyze the data that comes in afterwards, after I do it. Right. So once I analyze the data that comes back and it did it feel good, did I get what I wanted to achieve? Like, these are the questions that my science experiment, meaning myself, mm. is doing. So like I just had this happen and I realized what I'm doing and it's like, why am I asking for validation for something that I already know? It's because I'm addicted to trying to get that attention from those people and whoever it is, it doesn't even matter who it is. It's the attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I should have (laughs) <laughs> what is that i glitched i glitched <laughs> i was like i feel like i should have something in there but i just don't because that was so beautifully it's hard to like just <laughs> on to the next one and i was like oh, uh, how am i uh, <laughs> on to the next one because that was that was a great way to say that and then so yeah the, the next one i have is in this one this one made me run out of my room to go and talk to Nicole the other day because I oh, yeah. I, I haven't thought about this and uh, it's blowing my mind that this doesn't come up for us often. But 
I didn't realize that there could be people that struggle with this or do, you know, yeah, struggle with this is a great way to say it because this can be a struggle because this doesn't feel good, but something that can keep you from feeling inner silence or inner peace and both is holding grudges. Because when we yeah. stay mad at people, we're convincing ourselves that we're punishing them. Mm-hmm. And built up resentment like that stops you from achieving like inner peace because you're stuck in an isolated event. It's an event that happened that you're holding on to so dearly because you think that you holding that grudge is going to punish that person. In reality, they might not even care or think about it. Well, and this is where we we do a whole gaslighting and a whole illusional play of like in my head, I'm having a conversation with this person over and over and over and yeah. over again. Like I'm going to achieve something great from this. But like if it's shit when it starts, it's gonna be shit later. You know, and that's why you need to bury it because it's not gonna transform anything. Yeah. But you can use that for fertilizer for your seeds yeah man because like you know you you may have this event that happened to you and you think oh i'm gonna punish them i'm gonna bring this up i'm gonna i'm gonna hold on to this until the day i get to to bring it up and 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 you're just building up all this resentment and it really it really does it keeps you stuck in that place for a very Mm -hmm. long time and you can't have peace while holding grudges like that no, it's not going to let it flow. It's and really what you're doing is you're just attracting more things to be resented about is what you're doing. Uh-huh. Cuz remember what's out is within or what's in is without. Mm-hmm. What's out is within, man. Um my next one, I have a, a quite a bit for this one. Um so the next one that's going to also keep mm-hmm. you from inner peace is trying to be perfect. When you're striving for perfection, okay, not trying to be your best self, which is one of the agreements, right? Mm -hmm. When you're striving for protection, you train your mind to not settle for anything else, anything less than perfect, which results in you only working towards things that offer self-assured, like assured self-gratification. And Mm -hmm. inner peace is about being comfortable with our strengths and our weaknesses. And what can go along with this drive for perfection um affection is what i saw labeled as a self-improvement treadmill yeah oh and i love the way that is said absolutely and this <laughs> is going to be the desire to constantly improve and fix and heal ourselves and it can very very quickly become a situation that traps us right there's there's nothing wrong i want to make it clear there's nothing wrong with seeking growth and change but you have to know that at your core level, you are already whole. At your core level, you have everything you need, mm-hmm. right? We have all these muscles. It's like when we talk about we have all these muscles that we don't know we have. You're already whole. It's, it, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to get better or seek growth, seek change, seek healing. But it can really quickly get you into something that traps you in a loop of consistently doing the same thing. Right. Well, it's really that we know that it's a never ending story, right? Yes. We know that if I was done with the work that I was to put on this planet to do, I would be dead. Right. So, or I would move on to the next plane or whatever you want to say, but like, right. So it's super easy because if you're like, well, I'm always working on myself too. Like it's, it really is just a never ending story. (laughs) Yeah, man. Like you're just gonna, you're just gonna be on the treadmill. I'll just be over there on the treadmill if you need me. Right. And you could be on the treadmill working for something that is literally only self-gratifying. It's not actually seeking growth and it's not seeking change it's just right. because you're holding yourself to this level that is so perfect in your mind and it's only you that's going to get gratified when you get there and the likelihood that you're going to get there because you're on a treadmill not running through the woods up a mountain or somewhere out in nature the likelihood you're going to get there is not 
very high at all because you're on a treadmill and you don't go anywhere when you're on the treadmill. <laughs> right. It's again, it's that superficial running that, you know, we try just like the superficial piece. It's a superficial improvement of yourself, right? Like it's the, it's the gerbil on a wheel. Like yeah. you're not going anywhere. You're not anywhere. doing anywhere. And that's the thing, a great thing about nature is that you never know what's actually going to come around the corner next, right? Right. Like there could be a down tree. There could be that you have to climb over and then you learn something from that climb over because it like puts these little bits of, you know, steps of growth in your, in your path. That's why you have to move. You know, like if you're not, if you're not achieving like the creative thought, even like if I'm supposed to draw something and I can't think about anything to draw because I'm just sitting here stuck in my, can't think of anything to draw. I have to start drawing. I just start like priming the pump to get it to like go. Mm -hmm. And that's how you do that. But like, um, with this, we have to figure out how to kind of get off that treadmill and, and have fun. What's the point of being growth, having growth, if we're not having fun about it? Well, and I think there's two things that go into this whole striving for perfection thing is one, we just talked about it last week, is what is the fourth agreement? Always, Always do your best. Do your best. Mm-hmm. Always do your best. And we talked about it and doing your best isn't perfect, isn't perfect all the time. Mm-mm. It's where you're at. Did you do your best in the moment? I think that's mm-hmm. a huge one that you can play in your head to, um, to combat the strive for perfection. And I think the next one is, is the one we talked about before that surrender, surrender, Mm -hmm. surrender is something huge that goes along with inner peace and inner strength. That's why we did this episode after these ones, because you have to surrender. You have to just be okay with what's happening now. And you have to understand your strengths and weaknesses around it. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's, we don't hold space for the weakness part. Like if I came to you and told you, well, you know, I'm really good at this, but I'm really weak at this. We never hold space for that part of it and be like, oh, okay, well, I can take the slack up and I could do this. Or I even said it right there, slack, like that's not what it means. Right. Right. But like, if we would, that's why there's so many of us too. And we all hold different space than the other one. So if we are again, using the puzzle piece forum, like I am one piece of an entire picture, not the whole picture. Yeah. Oh, the perfect example of this for me is when we go to do house cleansings, Nicole can feel everything. I can see things. Mm-hmm. We both can ch- get downloads. Some, Mm -hmm. some situations, one of our strengths are stronger than the others. And it's not about the competition behind it. It's not about the, I'm not good enough to be here. I'm not strong enough for this. My weaknesses aren't great. I can't believe I can't feel this, or I can't believe I can't see this. It's, it's about trusting each other's strengths and exalting them in the best way for that situation of like, listen, I need you to tap in and see what you're feeling right now because I need to know if you're feeling what I'm seeing. Right. And if we're getting the same thing. And it's that's kind of like what all of this is about anyways, is like mm-hmm. looking for where your strengths can help your weaknesses, right? And like starting to build all these things up or just completely surrendering to that's one of my weaknesses. Uh, good. Another good example is I am not the best at redheads. I, I I don't really like it every time that I think it makes sense in my head. It never turns out how I want it to freaking turn out. And you know what? That's okay. I've accepted it and I'm okay with it. And you know what? I just refer them to Nicole or one of our friends, Trista, who are great at redheads. Redheads mm-hmm. make sense to them. And I am, <laughs> I, it makes me feel good. It makes the client feel good. Usually right. the client's very thankful because they're like, hey, thanks for being willing to say that like, that's something you're not good at and give me somebody that you 
you that that did everything that I needed them to do. And then they're they're happy, I'm happy, everybody's happy, and it feels really good. Well, when you take yourself out of the equation and you focus on what's the most important part, because in both those scenarios, it was the other person, Mm -hmm. whether it was the house cleansing or the client, you're taking yourself out of the equation of what are we trying to accomplish right now? Right. And none of those scenarios had anything to do with us. Right. Right. The main focus was to rescue the people or achieve the best color for the client. And that's where it is right there. We talked about this in surrender, but it just came in my head very clearly. Again, we're offering our egos up on silver platters and saying, this is in my way. I don't need this right now. I'm, I'm, I'm present. I'm here. Do what you will, you know? So it's well, really important in this. It is really important. You have to figure out, you know, I, I talk about this with schools a lot of the time. Like if your, if your main focus is like, say on mental health, then you're not doing anything to achieve that though. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's where the ego kind of comes in and like makes it about just looking good and not actually trying to achieve what they say they're trying to do. They say a lot of lip service. And I think the whole world says a lot of, like, we know mental health is a thing. And we know that, like, we really need to find a better structure that helps people with mental health. The thing is, is that we don't know what to do about that because we can't buy it, sell it, tag it. Do you know what I mean? Like, we can't put it in a box and say, here you go. Here's your mental health. The taste of it, the touch of it, the smell of it, the texture. <laughs> right, right. So we do this thing and it can't be structures because it's different for everybody, right? This right. is the problem in school is that the disconnect is, is they want one thing. Like you stand in a queue and you get up and you get your dose and you go back to class. Like that's what they want. They just want it to be structured, something that they can like, pat you on the head and then have you go back to class and then you're done. Right. But that's not what we got to do with mental health. You have to sift through, you have to look at it. You're like, okay, let's look at this a little differently, put it back in and then send them off to their class to work on it. It's a continuous thing. It's not just a one and done, ma'am. It's a, like, I'm going to need you to take this part and go work with it and then come back and we'll, we'll strive to do the next thing. Right. It's a build. It's not a thing that you're one and done with. And I think that's where we have a hard time with it. We're looking at it differently. Yeah. And that's what I was going to end the episode with as well as that all in all uh, with everything that we talk about, right? Everything that we have talked about this year, including right now with silence and inner peace, it's all a work in progress. It's all, we say this a lot. And I'm going to say it again. It's new muscles that we're finding within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take patience and consistency and compassion with ourselves and others. And it's the only way we can keep moving forward. And with this one specifically, it's the only way we can move forward to our fourth agreement of being our best selves. Absolutely. And as long as we remember that being our best selves is going to look different. Yes. In every second of every day and for every person, because we're all different. Absolutely. You just basically you want to be like, I did my best in that scenario. So whether I was sick with a hundred degree temperature and Mm -hmm. I did my ritual anyway, it's not going to look real good because I feel like poo poo. Like, but (laughs) if I'm, you know, I feel good about myself. I'm in a good mood. I'm in a good place. My ritual will look completely different. Right. Right. Yes. But I still on those occasion, A, got up and did it and did my best in both situations. Right. I'm glad we did the four agreements of soft dive. I'm glad we did surrender. Mm-hmm. I'm glad we did this one after those. I hope, and you know, well, I'm excited for our end of the year recap to like look at all of this and how far we've come. If you guys mm-hmm. have been with us this whole year. Oh my God. A whole year. First of Do all, you thank you, it? dude. Uh. yeah it's surreal um 
especially okay. like I'm thinking about excited. our first first podcast to now our first episode compared to now Whew. um oh my god I probably don't even want to look at that nope you don't want to listen to it I love ourselves <laughs> I love us I love our podcast we are doing the best we can and we did the best we could with that episode but we had to start right you yeah. had to start that's what like... I said we did the best we could with what we had, but it's just very funny mm-hmm. to see the difference for now. But, you know, this this year has been a lot of self-improvement and um, it's all for things like this. Like these, to me, in my mind and in my journey, things like this are ultimate goals, ultimate things I'll carry with me, like peace, inner peace. It's Nicole a while ago um, when she started doing ritual magic used to say, that she started feeling very centered and it's like she couldn't it's like nothing can move her and to me I'm now I I, throughout this process and the years of going through all this stuff it's because she started finding that inner peace that inner contentment Mm -hmm. that inner Mm -hmm. just strength of being so content and peaceful within that there aren't a lot of things that throw you you know you can still be sensitive and compassionate and have empathy for, towards people. You still have emotions. You're not walking around with inner peace, absolutely Buddha zinned out. You're not. It's the reality of it. You well, know? And that's the thing is I really think I've, I'm coming to the conclusion at this point is that, you know, we do, we do have this like disassociation with emotion and with, um, sitting in it you know whether we're sitting it in with ourselves or we're sitting in it with other people we don't know how to like have empathy and compassion for people even though we talk about it all the time right like we don't we want to fix it and we want it to stop is -hmm. what we want that's the feeling that we get like if i'm crying like people want it to stop and they want it because it makes them feel uncomfortable because it reminds them of their own emotions right and then they want to fix it Yep. Because again, they want it to stop and they want it to stop reminding of their own emotions. So it's very interesting at this point that like we, I think to be a whole human, at least from this angle at this point, is to have these emotions and making them more regular to be seen than to strive away from it or trying to fix it or disassociate yourself from it like I think we would build better humans if we showed them that we were depressed for depression's sake or if we showed them like look I'm just super angry right now and I need to like move through this and you know like trying to figure out how right because we're human and we're messy we're not gods right or robots for that matter right like we have these like We have these points that we have to move through, but what we end up doing is suppressing them and they come out in different ways, like a bum knee or a bum shoulder, or, you know, that our body is telling us that we have this stored up energy, but again, we're so afraid of it. We're so afraid of this raw emotions that we, we, I think we find it hard to, um, understand it and even let people be in it in our presence and I think that's you know where we we really need to strive for at this point is a having compassion when people are in it and realizing that all you need to do is surrender to it and be there you don't have to say anything you don't have to like um you're not fixing it you're just witnessing you're just observing that's all you need to do sometimes mm-hmm. is just sit there and watch it just so somebody can go through it. You don't have to be afraid of it. But I think that's where the big fears are is to see raw emotion, to see that power in whatever state it is. Yeah, it can be hard, especially when somebody's not looking at it for their own selves first, you know, mm-hmm. which, you know, it throughout this year and throughout all these episodes, I really hope that everybody is feeling better within themselves and with people Mm -hmm. around them you know it's been cool to get feedback from people you know Mm -hmm. personally as well as people we have not met because we have 
listeners all over the globe, but it's insane to me. Oh my uh, goodness. It's really cool. Um, and I hope little by little we just keep improving ourselves, which you know, you heal yourself, heal the planet, man. Well, and that's what our, our whole goal is, is if we can find if we can lead you to a little bit of peace in your life, a little bit of understanding, a little bit of compassion, that's what we want. Yeah. You know, let's without being too granoli, let's like spread spread peace, spread compassion, find the beauty in the planet that we have and people that we have with us. I told y'all in their last episode or the episode before. Man, there's a lot of freaking live, laugh, love happening over here. And I am not mad about it because I still have the dark <laughs> in my pocket too. But <laughs> right. the deadpan humor has not gone away. But there has been a lot more compassion for people and empathy. And even for myself, which has been really nice because we're our own worst critics. But yeah, inner peace, I think inner silence. Inner peace, inner silence. I like it. Me too. Did you want to say something else before we end? No. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we love you guys. We're thankful you're here. We're thankful you listened to us. And we're going to keep on trucking along with the next thing. And our next thing is disillusion. Ooh. What's it, mean? What's it mean? What does it mean? <laughs> what does it mean? What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, homies. Well, we will see you in the next episode. Bye.